we're going to tell you a little secret. Lifting weights can be boring sometimes, not to mention it can be time-consuming. Sure, there's those lifters that love the sweat and grind of the gym, but a large percentage of gym goers simply want to get their workout in and go home to their family or hang out with friends. Both approaches are entirely valid. Unfortunately, the minimalist approach seems to be ignored. It may seem like going to the gym isn't even worth it unless you have at least an hour. Well, we're here to tell you it definitely is. Better yet, the required time is much shorter than you think. This video will break down exactly what you need to do and lay out a sample workout. About seven years ago, the late infamous bodybuilder Rich Piana released his 8-hour workout. Yes, that is correct. He had a single workout where you would hit your arms for 8 hours in a single session. Not only is that crazy, there's plenty of people who were crazy enough to actually try it. Now, you don't need to be an expert to question the validity of this. Even Rich and his followers knew it was extreme. So, don't worry, we are not going to suggest this is what you need to do. However, it still made people question the right amount of time. Obviously, 8 hours is too much. But how much is not enough? Where does that threshold lay? While there is a wide range, your average habitual gym goer generally spends 1 to 1 and a half hours at the gym 3 to 5 times a week, with most towards the longer time frame. This may work for some people, others not so much. If it doesn't work for you, then what are other options? There doesn't seem to be many causing many people to skip the gym altogether. In fact, experts believe that lack of time is the most common reason for not going to the gym. The truth is, it doesn't need to be like this. In reality, you can get an amazing workout in just half the time of a traditional workout, and that's not an exaggeration. In fact, you'll be able to get the majority of your gains during this time. That is, if you do what we tell you to do. Listen closely as we're going to lay out exactly what you need to do. But first, before we look at your minimal training program, let's first look at what's needed to simply maintain your gains. What you'll learn is that while building muscle is pretty tough, keeping it is relatively easy. The minimum effective dose to maintain strength and muscle mass is surprisingly low. Research has shown that in order to maintain strength and muscle mass, a young person only needs to hit the muscle once a week, using one exercise to perform one set. The only caveat is this one set must be performed with high intensity, and you need to bring your set to failure. However, if you do, this will maintain your strength and muscle mass for 32 weeks. And to be clear, this is to simply maintain muscle. You won't be seeing any improvements here, but it may be enough for some people. If this is you, then your task is easy. Go to the gym once or twice a week, hit all of your muscle groups with high intensity, and you'll be good to go. Unfortunately, this is not enough to see progress. If you want to actually see more growth, you're going to have to do more. How much more? Before we get to that, let's talk about one of the reasons that actually inspired us to make this video. Recently, there has been a resurgence of interest in the training of one of those most successful minimalist trainees ever. We'll get to him later. But this type of training is supposed to be able to give you amazing results with just 30 to 50 percent of work that your average program has. How is this even possible? Or is it? Let's look at science to see if these claims are legitimate. Doing so, we'll also find out what the minimum dose is for gains. Now, different people have different reasons for training. For example, maybe you're training for strength or maybe muscle growth, or maybe you just want to improve your health. These three goals work on different physiological processes, meaning they have different needs. Let's start with strength. Why? Because strength is actually the easiest to improve. Well, not easy, but it requires the least amount of stimulation. You see, increasing strength comes down to exposing the muscle to a heavier weight. While more times would be better, exposing it just a few times can be enough to stimulate adaptations. A meta-analysis from 2017 proved this for us. The study wanted to look at the effect that different volume amounts had on strength gain. In this study, volume refers to the total number of working sets a muscle performs. They divided training volumes into low volume, which included less than five weekly sets, medium volume, which included five to nine weekly sets, and high volume, which included 10 or greater weekly sets. They then compared the differences made in strength. Right off the bat, we'll tell you that the medium and high volume group both made greater improvements in strength compared to the low volume group. However, these improvements did not occur in a dose response or a linear manner. In fact, the largest jump in gains happened in the low group. Compared to the high group, those who used just one to four working sets per week to train a muscle saw improvements of about 81%. This means 80% of their possible improvements were done within the first four sets. Another study backs this low volume strategy up. They had two groups training for 12 weeks performing the same exercise. However, one group used just three working sets per week, 
while another trained nine working sets. The primary exercises measured were bench press and leg press. The increase in bench press was 20% versus 33%, while leg press was 26% versus 56%. So while the nine sets did result in greater strength gains, the three working sets still saw significant increases as well. One very important variable to this study was that the participants had at least two years training experience. This means the gains seen with just three working sets were not newbie gains, a word used to describe how people gain strength very easily when they first start training. These were lifters who had to work hard for every improvement, and three sets was enough. This shows that when looking to optimize your time with strength gains, you can make great progress with just a few sets, regardless of your training status. Now, when it comes to increasing muscle growth, things are a bit different. You see, while strength just requires exposure to heavy loads, muscle growth requires an increase in volume. In fact, the relationship between volume and muscle hypertrophy is one of the most studied and documented phenomena that exists in the world of exercise science. Simply put, increasing volume increases muscle growth. This means we know that more volume will result in more growth. However, it will also mean more time is needed. While more is definitely better, how much growth does less get us? Interestingly enough, yet another meta-analysis was done in 2017 basically did the same thing as the strength study we just spoke about, but with muscle growth. This study also used the same groups 1 to 4 sets, 5, 9, and 10 plus. As expected, the 10 plus set had the greatest increase, while the 5 to 9 set group had less than the 10 plus set group, but more than the low group. Yet again, the biggest jump in gains was seen in those first four sets. While not as large as the strength gains, this lower volume still saw an increase equal to 61% of the 10 plus group. This means that just a couple sets a week will be enough to not only maintain gains, but to possibly even see gains. One critical variable we want to look at is your health. While most people don't think about health gains, it's an extremely important variable to train for. In fact, this may be the most important variable there is. This is especially true for those looking for a minimalist approach. There's a good chance that this group is more interested in just staying healthy compared to those training 10 plus sets for maximum results. If this is you, you're in luck, as it's less than need for strength. Research has found that just 30 to 60 minutes of strengthening exercise per week is enough to achieve maximum risk reduction in all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, total cancer, and diabetes. That's right, you get maximum protection from all-cause mortality for just one hour a week. That's a pretty good return with minimal training. So we now know that methods that claim they can provide similar improvements with 30 to 50% of work is possible. However, something has to be different between the way minimalists train and traditionalists train, right? You'd be right. Let's now look at some of the variables an effective minimalist needs to have to not only decrease the time spent in the gym, but to be effective as well. Let's first examine frequency. Frequency refers to the number of times you train a muscle during the week. Let's say you perform a total of three sets a week per muscle. Should you perform all three sets in one day, across two days, or should you perform one set three times a week? We know that many of the studies using low volume utilize three sets across three days, one set every day. However, under normal conditions, say following a traditional workout program, researchers believe that spreading your total workout sets across two training sessions is ideal. Unfortunately, we can't say for sure, but we can make an estimated guess that training a muscle two or three times per week would be ideal. This allows you to spread your sets out so that you can train them with higher intensity. For example, if you train all three sets the same day, your first set will be great, but it will cause fatigue for your second set. Your second set would result in even more fatigue and hinder your third set. However, if you instead train just one on three different days, each set is going to be done with maximal intensity and result in maximal effectiveness. Next, what exercises should we even be doing? This is essential as some exercises are definitely more suited for an effective minimalist training program. We'll tell you for sure that it is not isolation exercises. They only train one muscle at a time, meaning you need more exercises to hit all your muscles. Therefore, without a doubt, you should be doing your foundational compound exercises. These movements use multiple joints, meaning you will hit multiple muscle groups at the same time. They also allow heavier weight, leading to better strength gains. Now, there are a lot of compound movements, so we need to narrow down what ones to do. To do this, we just need to look at our biomechanics. By examining the way we move, we find there are seven primary movement patterns. They are vertical pressing, vertical pulling, horizontal pressing, horizontal pulling, squats, hip hinge, and lunge. Now, if you just use one exercise for each of these movements, you will hit every muscle in your body, perfect for a minimalist. 
Now you do have the option of adding in some smaller accessory work or isolations if you want. However, these don't need to be done and are purely optional. We're going to show you the best compound exercises to use for each movement pattern. We'll also show you how to deal with isolations for those that want. But before we go any further with your program, we need to talk about a game changer, time wasting. Even if you have a great program and great exercises, a minimalist can't waste time. The first thing you need to do is stop spending so much time talking to people and playing on your phone. When you go to the gym, you must walk in with intent. This doesn't mean you can't say hi and chat a little. However, don't get into actual conversations. We've all been there before. We stop for a chat and then suddenly 5 minutes has passed which turns into 10. It's been 20 minutes and your minimalist training hasn't even started yet. Therefore, stay focused at the gym. You have a job to do, so get it done. Another time waster happens before you even start your session, your warm-up. To be clear, warm-ups are an integral part of your training session and can greatly improve your workout. However, they do take time. Unfortunately, people usually do an excessive amount that's not even needed or helpful. While you should definitely still warm up, you can shave some time off by being specific. First, use a machine that uses both upper and lower body, for example, an assault bike or rower. These tend to get your heart rate up faster yet at a lower intensity, likely due to them using more muscle mass as they involve the lower body and upper body. This also leads to a quicker rise in core body temp. Do this with intent for 3-5 to five minutes. After, use a resistance band to perform some activation exercises specific to the muscles you're training that day. You can get this done in a minute using a circuit. There you go, you just shaved off 5-10 minutes and you haven't even started yet. So now you're ready to start your program. You finish your first set and then rest for 2 minutes before doing another set. You then rest again. Doing nothing! That's 4 minutes of doing nothing. Under normal conditions, this recovery isn't actually a time waster, as it's a vital part of your training to optimize the total amount of work you put in. The problem is the average rest time between sets is 1.30 to 30 minutes, and it adds up quickly. One exercise will take at least 5 minutes and up to 15 minutes. In fact, if you follow a typical training program, it's safe to say that two-thirds of your time will be spent recovering between sets. Two-thirds. This is not minimalist friendly, so we must optimize it. Therefore, let's use this rest time to exercise more. This method of training is called a superset and is done by training two different exercises that hit different muscle groups back to back. You basically use some of your rest period to train a different muscle. For example, you can train bench press and bent over rows, pull-ups and dips or bicep curls and triceps pushdown. You could also pair a lower body exercise with an upper body exercise. Your primary goal with these is to minimize the time spent in the gym while choosing exercises that won't interfere with each other. Usually, people do the exercises back to back right after one another. We think there's a better way, take many breaks between each exercise. For example, let's say your rest period is usually 2 minutes. To do a superset, you will first perform exercise 1. Once finished, you rest 45 to 60 seconds and then perform exercise 2. Rest 45 to 60 seconds, then perform exercise 1. Continue this until finished. Right away, you get twice as much work in the same amount of time. Now this is minimalist training. But that's not the only method that can optimize your minimalist training. The rest pause method is another, and it's very effective. This is performed by first performing reps until failure. You then rest 20 seconds and perform another few reps. You then rest another 20 seconds and continue until you either hit complete failure or your desired total reps. For example, a traditional set may have you perform 3 sets of 10 reps, which equals 30 total reps. You would then use the rest pause method until you hit 30 reps. Research has shown that this style of training could actually result in greater gains in both strength and muscle growth as well. More importantly, performing rest pause instead of traditional training takes less time to perform. Another win for minimalists. One method you can also use are drop sets. Drop sets are similar to rest pause sets as you'll first perform a set until failure. From here, instead of resting and using the same weight, you will drop the weight by 20-25% to and then immediately perform more reps until failure. Repeat this for 2-3 to three times. This is a classic method amongst bodybuilders to pack in as much volume as they can. It also works great for minimalists to shave time off their training. We now have most of the pieces to the puzzle, so we can almost assemble them to make an actual plan. But first, we need one more. We need the actual exercises. Earlier, we told you about the movement pattern, so we'll now give you some great options. For vertical pressing, good exercises are the military press and seated dumbbell press. For horizontal pressing, use the bench press, push-ups, and dumbbell press. 
For vertical pulling, your primary options are chin-ups, pull-ups, but also the lat pull-down. For horizontal pulling, we love the bent-over row, T-bar row, and dumbbell rows. For the hip hinge, use deadlift variations such as the Romanian deadlift, trap bar deadlift, or conventional deadlift. You could also use a barbell hip thrust. For squats, use the barbell back squat, front squat, safety bar squat, or even leg press. And the lunge, this includes walking lunges, reverse lunges, and split squats. We now have all the pieces for your minimalist training. Let's put them together in a program. The first option would be to perform one set for each exercise using a rest-pause method or drop set. Remember that even though you're only performing one set, it's equivalent to at least two, maybe three. When you do this, utilize two, three added sets after the working set. An example full body program would look like this. One, horizontal pressing, barbell bench press. Two, squat, barbell back, squat. Three, horizontal row, T-bar row. Four, vertical pressing, military press. Five, hip hinge, deadlift. Six, vertical pull, chin-ups. Seven, lunge, walking lunges. Use one to two minutes of rest between the exercises so you can bring each to maximum intensity. However, even if you use two minutes, this will take less than 20 minutes. When you add some warm-up and time for frivolous activity, you'll walk out of the gym 25 minutes after you walk in. Now, if you want to do some isolation exercises, do it in a circuit after your main lifts. It will look like this. Biceps curl followed by triceps extension, then leg extension followed by leg curl. Do these back-to-back -back with minimal rest? Superset minimalist. Now, another option you can use is a superset model. This could look like this. Superset 1 barbell bench press plus T-bar row x2 sets. Superset 2 barbell back squat plus chin-ups x2 sets. Superset 3 deadlift plus military press x2 sets. Use 45 to 60 second rest in the supersets. Between the different supersets, still use 1 to 2 minutes rest. This will still result in walking out the door in less than 30 minutes. If you have time, perform this circuit after walking lunges followed by biceps curl, then triceps extension followed by leg extension, and finally leg curl. Now there's one more key element to remember as you follow these plans. In the beginning of the video, we talked about a resurgence in minimalist training practiced by a certain person. This person was 1976 Mr. America and 1976 Mr. Olympia in the heavyweight division, Mike Mincer. Yes, a Mr. Olympia who practiced minimalist training in a similar manner to what you see in this video. Now Mike obviously knows the secret to minimalist training and you do too. When you follow your minimalist program, you must train with intensity, intensity, intensity. Squeeze out every rep and make them all count. Use the methods you learned in this video and follow your template one to three times a week as needed.